where I'm actually going to open up the floor here early to start uh, here to Sue first and have her kind of mention any any mistake that comes to mind when you know thinking about calorie calculators you know what is that mistake or multiple mistakes that people make yeah i think that one thing within calorie calculators or just equations in general is that the human bodies are these dynamic systems they are not just equations and we're not just machines of input and output and so being able to take the whole human into account is going to be a large aspect that's kind of sidestepped within just looking at an equation another thing here is going to be user error when it comes to these nutrition calculators you're having to self-report a lot of information and oftentimes we, again, report wrong. So when we're looking at activity levels, if you have a sedentary job and you train four or five times a week, you are not a very active person. Even though you do have a good amount of activity, when we're looking at these uh, calculators, when they say very active, that's looking at someone who is, again, very active. That doesn't mean that you're not active. We're just going to be able to make sure we report things correctly based on truly what your activity levels are. And if you don't wear some kind of tracker of a watch or a ring or whatever it may be, then that's something that you might not even know how truly active you are or aren't. So again, that user error of reporting as well as your intake level, because people do often under think that they are eating more and or less than they are actually eating. So that's another thing within reporting that you can kind of get that wrong as a whole. Another thing within calorie calculators is that people will just go for the largest deficit without taking into account their consistency, but I know that we'll be diving into that a little bit more. Um, and then another thing is not counting for adaptation. Because human metabolism is not static, as well as just depending on your background, that is going to largely depend on what your adaptations are as a human being and what your calorie changes, what your maintenance is. All of that is all going to be an aspect. So again, when we're looking at these equations, they can be so helpful and so insightful, but we do want to make sure that we understand the information that's going into it, which is what this episode is mostly about. So um, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Alex of what your thoughts are on some different things when it comes to calorie calculators um, of what all you feel is wrong with them. <laughs> yeah. So within the the calorie counters in general or the uh, equations that you would be utilizing, the main thing to do here is to not live and die by what is being produced or what the number is that comes out. I think that individuals, as soon as they run these equations, understanding and, and what Sue talked about with the dynamic nature of the human metabolism as a whole, you don't want to put yourself in this box of like, okay, I input these five or six things that the equation has asked for, the calculator has asked for, and then uh, have that number be spit out and then listen to nothing else within your biofeedback and how you're feeling from a day-to-day -day perspective, all those things not taken into consideration. So you want to to take these calculations and gather data. This is just a, a way for us to get closer to whatever is going to be best for you in general. So you're going to use this as a kind of a, a baseline of this is where the intake is at. And I've got data collected over, let's say seven days or maybe 14 days. I want to look at how my weight trended, what my energy was like throughout with that intake in place. How is my training performance? How is my sleep? How is my stress? All these things that we would be looking at within our, our client check-ins. And you want to analyze those things. And then from there, make adjustments to that intake. Maybe you need a little bit more food. Maybe your energy was down in those different factors. Maybe you were a little bit more irritable. Those different aspects to find what's going to be the best suit for you so that you want to use this as kind of a starting point. And I like the, the nutrition calculators as a whole. I, I understand that they get a really bad rap because you may use one nutrition calculator and then you use another one and the numbers are different in those different aspects. But especially when, when I was first starting, I didn't have the the money for a coach. And as I was trying to learn and, and figure things out, it was a good baseline for me. I understood that it was like, 
Is there better options? Of course, working with an expert who is going to potentially be five, $600 a month or something along those lines is going to be a better way for me to reach my goals. But at the time, I did not have the finances to do so. Thus, utilizing the nutrition calculator was a great option for me to get an understanding and learn for more for me. I think that the big thing when you're working with a one-on-one -on -one coach that has a lot of expertise, you put yourself in a situation where they've gone through the crap for you. They've uh, made the mistakes and then they are basically saving you from making the same mistakes. Whereas with the nutrition calculator puts you in a scenario where you are like, you're trudging through the mud yourself. So I think it can be a useful tool. It's just context dependent on your scenario and those different things. Yeah. And I think another thing here is just what you talked about with inconsistency of if you go ahead and you do the number that was spit out to you and you don't get the desired results that you wanted from hitting that number, being able to take into consideration exactly like Alex said, all those different variables. And if you listen to episode 61, we kind of talk about when you should adjust macros um, after you've possibly hit a plateau or different things to take into consideration and things that we take into consideration when looking at our client check-in. So definitely go listen to episode 61 to get a little bit of insight as far as, all right, if I am going to take this number, what other metrics do I need to be aware of? Because if you just take that number and think, because I did this calorie calculator and now I have this number, regardless of if I hit it or not, or if I'm paying attention to my sleep or anything else, I should lose weight. Because you're putting yourself in a diet mentality without possibly being in an actual diet, if that is your goal, that is something that is commonly people's goals, the reason why I say dieting, but truly being able to take inventory of these different variables, not only going into the equation, but what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis within the end number that you got. Are you actually hitting that number? What does it look like for the quality of foods that you're having? How consistent? And then those other biofeedback markers as a whole. So I very much so agree with Alex that they can be a very, very great tool. And just like Alex with having a coach, it can quiet that noise. Whereas now that you have this calorie calculator, you have to be aware there's a lot of noise that you do have to trudge through and you have to figure out, okay, what does this look like? And how can I use this to get the most information from it? Bingo. So the point, you know, I think the big things we want to want you guys to take from that is like, this is a starting point for you, right? And it helps reduce the noise, as Sue just said, right? Because if you go into this completely blind and you're just like, I don't know, you know, I've heard 2000 calories a day is a, is a normal what things are based off of. Like that's a normal human uh, calorie amount that we decided on at some point, you know, for reasons beyond my intellect at the moment. So, you know, I don't really know why we chose 2000, but like, hey, if that's the only number you've ever heard, that may be what you're aiming for, you know, without knowing much else. But what a calculator can do is get you within the ballpark of, hey, based off of, you know, a few questions, based off of, you know, things we understand about, you know, the laws of th thermodynamics, general physiology, metabolism, these should be relatively close, right? And what you do thereafter and how you, you know, alter those numbers or manipulate those numbers or goals based off of things you're doing and the goals that you may have is kind of where the next step comes, right? So understanding this is just a tool and this is going to allow us to be in a ballpark of where we generally need to be close, right? And that's as far as this goes. And when you do multiple calculators too, you're gonna get multiple answers, right? That's a normal thing. So I just wanna kinda like get that out of the way. That's a normal thing.